Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's on the go in movies? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, there's a lot of movies on Netflix, and sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what you want to watch. I, I've, I've been there. It's uh, I kind of miss the old days of the video store where you could pick up a box and look at it. But Netflix, you have just like these little pictures, and you're trying to figure out what to watch next. A little picture and a little re- and a little rating, and uh, sometimes you get a hundred percent score on a movie, and it's great. And other times you've got a zero percent score on a movie, and it's still great. Yeah, there's the some things can be so bad that they're good. Yeah, and um, one of the worst movies on Netflix right now is Game Over, Man. Did you ever watch Workaholics? I don't think I have. Okay, well, um, Workaholics was a show that went until about 2017, and it had a cast of three um, zany workaholics who smoked a bunch of weed and got got into trouble. Well, once that show ended, they decided to make this movie Game Over, man. And, well, let me tell you, it's... um, it got a 5 out of 10 on IMDb. Okay. And it's not really doing so great on Netflix. But, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes, it's got an 80%. Oh, wow. Um, it's it's like a comedy action film that you've really good, just got to see it. I And it's one of my personal favorites. So, in terms of bad movies, how does it compare to The Room? <laughs> so, let's, uh, let's, let's rate everything in terms of The Room. I'd give well, it uh, four rooms out of five. Four, well, we should do it in Wizos. Wizos? Wizos, yeah. Four Wizos out of five? Four Wizos out of five. Okay. Must see. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, another horrible movie is The Ridiculous Six. Okay. That, uh, I think that's uh, Seth Rogen? Nope. No. Nope. He might have actually done a good job. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, it's an Adam Sandler movie, and I don't really think Adam's been very good since the mid-2000s, personally. He did Uncut Gems, which was, it was a fantastic drama uh, uh, thing. But I think he uh, he made a post on Twitter, and he said, yeah. if uh, Uncut Gems doesn't win an Oscar, the next movie he's going to make is going to be completely terrible, so. Well, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ridiculous, well, Ridiculous 6 came out in... Um, 2015, and uh, it's about six unlikely brothers in the Wild West, and um, all. And to me, it's just proof that Netflix will greenlight anything. I'm still waiting for them to greenlight some of my stuff. I, <laughs> hey, man, enough emails, and they probably will. It's like, oh no, it's that Mike guy again. No, I, I haven't actually pitched anything to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, take a wild guess on what it got on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I'm gonna say three. Three percent? Sure. You lost the prices right because it got a zero percent. Oh wow! Yeah, and personally, I would give it. I mean, if we're gonna really compare it to the room, I, I gotta give it two Wizos out of five. Now, the Wizos are they the more the better or the less the better? In this <laughs> I case? think it's the more the better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so bad it's good, or so good it's bad. There you go. So moving on, we've got Super Confidential, which is a 2020 flick. Um, it, it's it's starring Marky Mark, but not the Funky Bunch. Not the Funky Bunch? Unfortunately I mean, that's, not. That loses like two Wizos right there. It does, actually. But it's got Post Malone, so that kind of, he could probably fill in for the rest. Well, I'm a, more of a pre-Malone fan myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen pictures of Post Malone before he got his tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of a nerd. I, I, know, I know very little about Post Malone, honestly. I know he's got lots of tattoos. And that's it. And the fact that I can make a pun out of his name. Yeah, well, pre-Malone, not as interesting as Post Malone. Okay. But um, it's one of those movies that are so bad, it's okay. I would, uh, it, it, it got 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, but on IMDb it got, uh, oh, sorry, I'll try that again. It got 36 on Rotten Tomatoes, but on IMDb it got 60%. So we kind of got mixed signal, signals going on. But it's uh, it's a it's a crime action movie that's supposed to be funny. But that's kind of where it fails. <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I mean, Marky Mark, probably not best known for his comedy chops, so. No, honestly, if you want to watch a Marky Mark movie that's a little bit older, but that's kind of funny, I would definitely watch um, I Heart Huckabees. Definitely a good movie, but not super confidential. No. Um, 
What else do we got going on? Um, oh, yeah. And then the last movie on Netflix I'm going to talk about today isn't actually So Bad It's Good. Ooh. It's actually So Good It's Good. Oh, my goodness. Did you watch Spider-Man Homecoming? I have, yes. You know, when I heard that they were going to make a new reboot for Spider-Man, I was pretty nervous. Especially considering Toby's performance. I mean, it was good, especially for its time, but it didn't really hold up to the test of time. Well, I don't know about that. No? But, uh, yeah. What, what, what do you like better, the Toby Maguire performance or the Holland performance? Honestly, I think they're, they're both good in their own right. Okay. I'm also a sucker for, as I went on that tangent last week about Bruce Campbell, so I'm a sucker for, like, Sam Raimi <laughs> yeah. joints, so. That's fair. That is uh, that is too way too fair, actually. But I tell you, um, yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming, it's on Netflix. If you haven't seen it yet, the reboot wasn't bad. And if you need a rating to make you watch something, it got a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Also, it's got Batman. That's right. Yeah. But like, if I had to give it um, a rating on, of YZOs, I would say it's only got one YZO out of 10. It doesn't have a damn bone of bad comedy in it. Oh. Yeah. So that's kind Darn. of disappointing. Um, but yeah, there's there's actually movies that aren't on Netflix. Well, you're kidding. I'm not. My. There was a whole world of film before Netflix. And one know. of those films was a 2011 Canadian film. What was that? Hobo with a shotgun. Ah, I, I know of this one. Haven't actually seen it, but I know that they use the same theme song from the 1980s raccoons cartoon in it. That's right. And not only do they use that theme song, it was filmed in Technicolor. And um, originally it was like a $150 trailer, like a joke. Yeah. But people loved it so much they turned it into a full film. And if you like B-rated, gory action films that are from Canada. Hobo with a shotgun does not let down. I, I think it's supposed to bring back kind of those grindhouse days, like yep. those 70s movies, which were kind of heavy on the action, but <laughs> not so much on anything else, like the Roger Corman stuff. Yeah, and that gets a five out of five. Uh, five Wessos out of five. Oh, wow. And that's all I've got to talk about today. All right, we're going to be back, and I'm going to talk about video game news. Oh! <gasps> Why didn't I mention rubber? <laughs> oh! Hello there. Now, if you like listening to local music or the fellow next door or the lady down the street that plays really good guitar, tune in to Locally Yours, 7 o'clock on Tuesday evenings on Peace FM. Welcome back to Media Minute, your headlines and quick times. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to you a little bit about video games. Yeah, and uh, some interesting releases this week. First up, we have Star Renegades from Massive Damage. It's coming out for PC, and uh, it actually is out right now for PC, but a little bit later in the year, which is, there's not much year left, it's going to come out for the Xbox One, Switch, and PlayStation 4. It's a strategy RPG about outsmarting AI-driven adversaries, forging friendships, and toppling galactic empires over multiple generations. It's roguelike where you travel from planet to planet, and it has a fantastic art style, Jesse. If you get okay. a chance, look up the art for this because uh, this is the best like pixel art that I've seen in a long time. Okay, so is it kind of like uh, in the 16-bit realm or more in the 8-bit realm? It's uh, more high-def kind of pixel art. <sighs> Very That's cool. the best way I describe it. It's, uh, no, it's kind of a difficult game as most ro roguelikes yep. are, and it's doing fairly well, 77, a Metacritic. So it's a space roguelike. It's a space roguelike, yeah. I'm going to have to pick that up. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. If it's coming out for Switch, I might pick it up for that because my Switch is uh, poorly neglected, actually. <laughs> All right. Do you like Avengers? I love Avengers. Well, Marvel's Avengers is out now from Crystal Dynamics. Came out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It's a third-person action adventure that combines an original cinematic story with single-player and cooperative gameplay. And, uh, yeah, you get to play some of your favorite Avengers. You have the Hulk, yep. you have Captain America, you have Thor, you have Black Widow, and uh, they have uh, Ms. Marvel, I think, uh, Kamala really? Khan. You start off playing her. Yeah, they have uh, some great uh, 3D cutscenes. It's up to four players. Uh, thing is, uh, it's almost uh, kind of a Diablo-type game because you grind for gear. Okay, is it top-down as well? Uh, no, it's third person over his shoulder. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the... 
initial reviews are, there, it, people are saying it's okay. They're saying maybe a little bit later once it gets some more content, might be a little bit more fun. Uh, 70 right now for on Metacritic. Well, I mean, at least it has local multi multiplayer. That's always been really important to me because yeah. I've never really been an online gamer. No. I'm just kind of more of an in-person kind of guy. Yeah, it's, it's more fun gaming with your friends. Now, this one, uh, well, it's uh, currently rated the third best game of uh, 2020. Wow, we're not even in the final quarter. No, uh, it's Crusader Kings 3 from Paradox Interactive. Now, oh, okay, that makes I've, more sense. <laughs> it's a grand strategy game where you manage a uh, medieval dynasty. So it's basically like playing Game of Thrones because you're trying to manage your family in a medieval setting. And, uh, you know, you're doing stuff like uh, marrying off your daughter for alliances. <laughs> Or killing off <laughs> your kid because he's yeah. not really smart. <laughs> it's, uh, so it has emergent gameplay because uh, while you're trying to do all these actions to right. kind of cement your dynasty and grow your kingdom, uh, the AI is doing the same thing as well. So right. you might be thinking things are going great, but suddenly your spy master has raised an army himself and is trying to rebel against you. Wow, so you have to worry about internal rebellions. For sure, for sure. Currently uh, running 91 on Metacritic, and like I said, it's uh, ranked the third best game of 2020. Wow. Now, skateboarding. Who do you think of when you think of skateboarding? Tony Hawk. Yeah, guess what? They remade Pro Skater 1 and 2. Finally! Yeah, it came out for the PS4, uh, Xbox One, and the PC from Vicarious Visions, and you get to drop back in with the most iconic skateboarding game ever made. Ever. That's, I still, every, or once a year, I wrap Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And I've got to do it on a PlayStation 1 with all, with the worst graphics. Well, now you can do it on PC because they rebuilt it in HD and comes with all the skaters, levels, and tracks. Wow. Yep. So that's a good one. Rodney gets to skate again. <laughs> now this, this thing. It's not a game, but I want to talk about the Xbox Series S. Okay. See, Xbox, uh, we're moving into the next generation of kind of the consoles. And uh, coming out November 10th, you have uh, the Xbox uh, new one. And then you have the Series S. Now, the, the main Xbox that's coming out is coming out for $599.99 in Canada. Okay. Now, the Series S, which apparently has the same next-gen performance, is coming out for $379.99. So, $220 of savings. It's a smaller unit. Kind of looks like a speaker. Huh. Yeah. So, uh, is, there you go. Is it supposed to be competing with the new PlayStation? It is. It is. And the big thing about the PlayStation right now, as of this filming... They haven't released any prices that's yet. Right. So, yeah, that's coming up in November. So, you know, having that kind of budget console, that might be the thing that puts them over the edge for this uh, console war. Huh. You know, that's a pretty bold move to release the price of the new Xbox before Sony. Yeah. Here's, I, the, here's the thing about this one, though. Mm -hmm. There's no disk drive. It's all digital content. Huh. So for those game collectors out there, that might not be the console for them. Personally, that what happens when you don't have internet? That's going to cut off a lot of people. But it, then again, yeah, internet's becoming more and more essential as a service in general. So uh, I'm sure someone somewhere has done like a whiteboard full of calculations on why this makes sense. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, be interesting to see if uh, like PlayStation comes back with a similar thing. I bet you know what I'm going to make a, a guess. And you can you can double check me on this when the prices actually come out. But I bet you that the Sony PlayStation Five is going to be six ninety nine ninety nine. I think so. It's it looks pretty pretty interesting. It's good. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. The big thing, exclusives. What's coming out for what system? And if one wins it over the other in terms of titles, then that might be the thing that drives what people buy. Yeah, but you know, with we can with all this said, the computer never took over. Uh, the the com you'd think that the computer would have won the battle by now, but I guess it's a big it's a big price difference between a computer and like for instance the new Xbox. How much you you said it was like three hundred bucks for the budget? Uh, the budget one is uh, three seventy nine ninety nine Canadian. It's two ninety nine American. Yeah, I don't think you can get that kind of next-gen performance out of a PC for that price. No, and there's the benefit of the console being the fact that if you buy a game for it, it's going to work. You don't have to worry about graphic cards, RAM, hard drive space, anything like that. Updates. My yeah. video card updated not too long ago, and I couldn't play a single game. So that's yeah. another bonus for Xbox. 
Well, that wraps things up for this edition of Media Minute. Hopefully you enjoy the show. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. I want to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe.